Hello class, uh, chapter 12 is our last chapter in Intermediate 1. Woohoo! So chapter 12 is on intangibles. So let's talk about intangibles a little bit. Remember, intangibles are legal rights. So intangibles are legal rights like copyrights, patents, goodwill. And so we have a distinction between assets and intangible assets that have an indefinite life versus a definite life. So Indefinite life are assets like goodwill and trademark. Um, they can have those forever, and so therefore we account those account for those just a little bit differently than we do with limited life, like a patent or a um, a copyright. So we'll look at limited life and then intangible assets, goodwill, and we'll do some goodwill uh, amortization. So let's start with some general rules for amortization of intangibles. We're going to use just straight line, cost minus salvage value uh, uh, divided by the life. Now, there's not always a salvage value. Often it's zero, so uh, we're going to assume zero salvage. A couple of notes. A patent, if you're an inventor uh, or if you create medicine, uh, is also patented. Then there's a 20-year legal life. You're going to capitalize the legal cost to successfully defend a patent. So if you defend a patent, it costs you $100,000, then you can capitalize those and then you can amortize that. Otherwise, there may not be very much um, cost of the patent, even though it may have lots of value. You may self-develop a patent and uh, there's not a lot of value attached to that patent uh, on the financial statements, but you could turn around and sell it for $3 million. Well you know, you'll use that to, to generate revenue or, or to sell it, but the patent itself may not have a lot of actual dollars attached to it on our financial statements, on our balance sheet. Trademark trade name has an indefinite 10 year period, uh, 10 year renewal period. So Coca-Cola is a trademark of the Coca-Cola company. So they keep renewing that every 10 years. Goodwill, uh, we'll talk about goodwill here in just a minute. Now, research and development cost is in this area of um, intangible assets. Basically, the rule is we're going to expense all research and development cost. We're trying to create maybe a new product. Let's say we're a pharmaceutical and we're trying to create a new product, a new vaccine, a new drug or whatever. Well, we're going to expense everything up on, on R&D up to the point of production or the commercialization of a product. Once we have a product that's ready to go, then that be, can become an asset. Then capitalize as a patent or a copyright or a trade name or inventory or whatever the, is appropriate. If we're making, if we're a drug company, then it's a patented thing. If it's a copyright, if we're doing research and development, software is copyrightable. So. Uh, if you have, uh, you're developing a game, then you copyright that game when you're ready to produce it or ready for commercialization. So you expense everything up to the point uh, while your research and development phase. Here, software specifically is the same kind of idea. Expense all development costs up to the point of technological feasibility. You have a working model and then you can amortize based on the percent of revenue you think it's going to last for three years and the revenue is going to look something um, over time. Or you could just do a straight line method over the useful life. And impairment. You, um, you can report an impairment, the lower of book value or net realizable value. And you cannot r uh, recover a loss or write up um, the impairment. You cannot write up the impairment again. We'll talk about goodwill here, impairment in a little bit. Now, here we have limited life intangibles, things like copyrights or licenses or franchises or patents. We're going to record annual amortization. Now, it's depreciation except when we switch over to intangible assets. We now call it amortization. Amortization is depreciation for intangibles. Plan assets, in fact, let me give you a note on this. Uh, plan assets are depreciated. So it's called depreciation. If it is an intangible asset, or if it's a natural resource, 
We didn't really mention this, um, but this is really all you need to know. Intangible assets would be amortized. So amortization. Natural resources are depletion or depleted. And obviously I can't spell depletion. I-O-N, how about that? Depletion. So plant assets are depreciated and you have all the different methods, straight line, some of the year's digits, double declining balance. Intangible assets basically are straight line. Natural resources are straight line. Natural resources are things like oil and timber and uh, coal or whatever. Those are natural resources. Okay, so if you amortize a patent, you just debit amortization expense and credit the patent. There is no accumulated amortization account. So you just directly reduce the patent, the intangible asset. Impairment is the same rules as property, plant, and equipment. Now, we're going to give an example. We're going to use equipment example, but this could be for a copyright or a patent or whatever. First, there's the recoverability test, and that's a cash flow test. Is there impairment, yes or no? Then, if yes, then you do the impairment fair value test. And for intangibles, you may not recognize, you cannot restore any impairment under GAP. You may recognize it under IFRS. And so GAP and IFRS rules are similar for assets held for sale. So let's do this. Let's, let's do an example of impairment. Now this counts for plant assets and for limited life intangibles. So the first thing we do, first thing we do is we have the expected future cash flow versus the book value. So let's say we have equipment. Here's our bit of information at the very first. So let's say we have equipment that is on our books. Our equipment book value is 300,000. So the equipment book value is 300,000. We think we're going to receive cash flows totaling 325,000 over the next however many years, two, three, four, five years, whatever. We think we're going to have total cash flows of 325,000. If that's true, then we say, hey, there's no impairment. So first of all, no to impairment. And then we do not have to do the impairment test. So no, um, impairment, fair value test, right? So if there's no impairment, then we're not going to do that next, the next test. So let's keep going. If the total cash flows is 250,000, this is changing, then yes. I'm going to put it over here. Then yes, we say there's impairment. Then yes, we need to calculate the fair value. So we do some kind of calculation like what is the present value of cash flow? So let's say you know how to do present value. So we'll just assume the number here. Let's say the present value is 205,000. Now watch the cash flow is 250, but if you discount it, bring it back to present value, it's 205. Then we say, hey, we've got an impairment loss. What's the impairment loss? Well, it's on our books at 300, and we think it only has a value of 205, so the impairment loss is going to be 95,000. So 300 minus 205 is 95,000 impairment loss. If you want to show it as negative, then you can do 205 minus the 300, and yes, we'd have a negative. It's an impairment loss. So we're going to debit loss on impairment and credit accumulated depreciation for the equipment. Now this is for limited life intangibles and this is for plant assets. This is both for plant assets and for limited life intangibles. So this could be equipment, this could be a patent. What do we do for indefinite life? Indefinite life would be goodwill or trademark, trade name. Now we're going to use a fair value approach. We're not going to record amortization, but it's very similar to the impairment approach. We're going to adjust the book value or the carrying value only when it's impaired. So 
Goodwill is treated differently than the intangible. So let's look at what happens. We're going to do the two tests for impairment. We're going to check for impairment in future years by using the two tests below. And you cannot later reverse impairment. You cannot write it back up. So we use the, um, for this is for Goodwill specifically. For indefinite life, we use the fair value test over and you can restore it previously recognized impairment. So just a little bit different. We have in, indefinite life, uh, I'm sorry, definite life. We have indefinite that's in two categories, goodwill and all the other ones like a trade name or a certain license that has indefinite life. All right, let's do some problems here related to this. Now let's go back and think about intangible assets is amortized over straight line. Natural assets are depleted. Deplet depletion is also straight line. So let's go back and think about our categories, indefinite life assets. We basically have two, goodwill and then everything else, and everything else could be trademark or some licenses or whatever. So we do not amortize goodwill. Now, what is goodwill? You may not have, have seen this, but goodwill is when you pay more than the fair value of the assets. Let's say you pay 10 million for a company. The assets on the balance sheet are 5 million. The liabilities are 1 million but the fair value of the assets are nine, and the fair value of the liabilities are one, so the fair value of net assets, the fair value of the net assets are eight million. So why would you pay 10 million for a company that only has assets, fair value assets of eight million? Well, a company is worth more than the, just the value of the assets, right? There's, there's all sorts of um, suppliers, and you've got people working there, you've got a reputation, you've got continuing sales, all that is worth more than just the fair value of the net assets. So if you paid 10 million for a company, you can only record the assets, the fair value of the assets at 8 million. So you're gonna have a $2 million goodwill to make the balance sheet balance. So you put in 10 million and you've gotta show assets of 10 million. And so you have an asset, intangible asset called goodwill of 2 million. Goodwill occurs when you buy an asset, buy a company uh, you buy a, a, a product or a division or whatever, and you pay more than the fair value of the assets. Now, it could go the other way. The fair value of the assets could be independently $8 million, and you pay 6 Well, uh, maybe it's a distressed sale or whatever, or somebody's willing to sell cheaply, and you actually uh, have negative goodwill, essentially. Now, a trademark is... The impairment is only with the fair value test. Now we have limited life assets like copyright, licenses, patents, franchise. So you just amortize that over the useful life. So you amortize limited life assets. You do not amortize goodwill. All right, so the straight line amortization works. Research and development, remember you expense up to the point of production. Software costs, you expense until it's feasible and there's no impairment um, for intangibles uh, for research and development. There's no impairment for that. All right, so let's do an impairment. We have equipment. This certainly could be a patent. Equipment costs 400000 The accumulated depreciation for equipment is 50000 Our cash flows year one, two, three is 100000 for each year, and the discount rate is 6%. So first thing we want to do is a recoverability test. So we need to figure out what is our book value. Our book value is 400,000 minus the 50,000. So our book value is 350,000. What is our total cash flows? Our total cash flows are just, we just add them up. We do not discount them on the recoverability test. So our book value is 350. Our total cash flow, just the adding up of the cash flow is 300,000. So is there impairment? Yes, because we're think, we think we're only gonna receive 300,000 when our book value is 350. So how do we measure the loss? We're gonna use the impairment fair value test. We're gonna take the book value and we'll take the present value of the cash flows. So let's do this. So let's say we've got one period per year, we've got um, three years, we've got 6% is the discount rate. We're going to calculate present value if we have payments of 100,000 
and the future value is zero. So this is a present value problem. Present value of the rate is going to be 6%. The number of periods is going to be 3. The payment is going to be the 100,000. The future value is going to be 0. And the payments happen at the end of the period. So we end up with 276,000. It's negative. I'll, make, I'll just flip the sign a little bit. So we say the present value of those cash flows is 267. So we're going to put 267, 301 here. So what is our loss? Our loss is 267 minus the 350, and our loss is 82,699. 82,699. Now, if we want to flip it and just show as a positive number, we'll take the 350 minus the 267. So the loss is 82. So what's our entry? Impairment loss and accumulated depreciation equipment. Now, what if this were a patent? We, we said this was equipment. If this were a patent, then we just make this entry, impairment. $82,699, sorry. $82,699. Impairment loss, and what would we credit? If it's a patent, remember there's no accumulated uh, amortization, so this would just be a patent. If it were a patent, it would be impairment loss and patent. All right, well, let's show goodwill, and this is our last problem. Goodwill, let's say we have <clears throat> uh, the book value of cash, accounts receivable, plan assets, goodwill, accounts payable. Our net assets are one million. Okay, our net assets, this is on our books. So we look at our balance sheet, we say, hey, here's our assets, and here is our liabilities, including goodwill, right? We think the business, so if we think the business is 1.6 million, the fair value is 1.6 million, the net assets are 1 million, then hey, there's no impairment, so we stop, no more calculations. We just run that test every year. If we think the fair value of the business is 90,000, I'm sorry, 900,000, then the net assets are 1 million, then we have to write it down. We say, hey, look, yes, there's a loss of 1 million, and we just simply say loss on impairment, goodwill, uh, 100,000. So we mark down goodwill. So what happens is it's going to be at the end of all this, we would say, in fact, let me grab all this. We would mark goodwill down so the net assets are 900000 and we think the fair value business is 900000 So we don't want to go above that if we think the fair value is only 900000 Hey, this is our last problem in intermediate, our last chapter, and uh, good luck. You, you can do this. Thanks. Enjoyed having you in class.